Now to our ongoing series we call Undercovered. It's where NBC News investigative correspondent Ronan Farrow digs into stories that we may not always see in the headlines. That's right. Last week he covered some controversial addiction treatments. This morning he's looking at the very nature of addiction itself. Ronan, welcome back. Good morning, guys. Always good to be here. A lot of change in health care lately. If the new Health Care Act, recently passed by the House, actually becomes law, it's going to eliminate requirements that Medicaid cover addiction treatment. That is igniting new debate over fundamental questions. Is addiction a disease? And should it be treated that way? I hated waking up and not knowing what I had done the night before. I gave my children up for a couple of years. I would never, never in a million years consider doing that if I were sober. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Nicola, Francie, and Ginny, daughter, mother, and grandmother. One family, three generations of alcoholism. I can remember times I was so impatient and lose my temper and like, what? It wasn't yeah. her normal self. I threw her down on the floor for God's sake. Who does that? What normal mother does that? They say addiction has ripped through their family. My brother died of alcoholism, but my dad had it, his father had it. I had two brothers who died of alcoholism. So this is all over your family? Yeah. yeah. It goes on and on and on. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it's a disease. It's just in the genes. As is the case with other medical research, scientists are studying twins to figure out how big a role genetics play in addiction. Most researchers agree that your genes determine more than half of your vulnerability to addiction. After three generations of living with that reality, Nicola, Francie, and Ginny have come to believe in early education. My son is 10, and we haven't, we actually haven't talked about this yet. Within the last few months, I just had this feeling like, okay, now is the time. I need to start talking to him about it. At 10? Yeah, yeah. But treating addiction like other inherited diseases and encouraging early knowledge of family risk is controversial. The new Health Care Act championed by President Trump moves to treat addiction less like a disease, stripping back protections for access to addiction treatment. All this despite the fact that Trump's brother died fighting alcoholism. And Trump says he educated his kids early about inherited risk. If you have the gene, I'm not sure that you can moderate very easily. Some in the medical establishment argue that talking to your kids about family risk too early can be dangerous. If you choose to lay that on them as a genetic obligation, you're wrong. Believing that you're destined to be an addict, born generationally to be an addict, is a self-fulfilling prophecy. But many experts say that kind of thinking has failed addicts. We're looking at addiction all wrong, and we're not investing in prevention. Dr. Joseph Lee is the medical director for the Hazel and Betty Ford Youth Continuum. If you saw any kind of disease running through families, one generation after another, the prudent thing to do, the moral thing to do, the scientific thing to do is to invest early so that the next generation doesn't develop problems. But for addiction, we wait until people use drugs, which is kind of like screening after people have had heart attacks for heart disease. Genetic predisposition. One of Hazelden's programs, Freedom from Chemical Dependency, sends specialists to talk to students about family history. Who has talked to their parents about whether or not there's a history of addiction in the family? Anyone? Nicola, Francie, and Ginny say that kind of early communication is a lifeline they wish they'd had sooner. This was a sin to my family. They did not support me at all. I just remember it more as being a lecture. Tell me about the approach you took with Nicola. Were you a little more uh, understanding as a definitely. result? I didn't really lecture her. She would like kind of drop hints to me like, like, oh, you're on your way, you know, like, you're, you're, you're right, like, you're <laughs> headed down that road. Today, Nicola has been sober for 18 years, Francie, 26 years, and Ginny, 56. I got married sober, I had my kids sober, so I am so grateful for my family members who came before me because it wouldn't have been that way, I know it. Francie, what does it mean to you to hear that maybe the lesson of what you went through helped Nicola? Well, it just occurred to me when she said that. It just gets better, better each generation. I think it just improves and we get better and we learn more. And uh, I don't know, it's very emotional. 
clear science showing genetics playing a role, but still a lot of controversy over what that should mean for treatment. I don't know, guys, do you think 10 is too early to talk to your kids about this? No, not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you do it in the right way, right. in an age-appropriate yeah. way. Yeah, and when it's in your family, boy, it's a ticking, ticking time. I mm -hmm. think that's right. Rowan, thank Thanks. you. Good to see you guys. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.